Welcome to this U-Surface Mesh video. Uh, in this video, I want to show um, how to use U-Surface Mesh Grid to um, displace a mesh with something like uh, forest branches or river rocks um, that can be stamped into the scene as a static mesh, uh, including Nanite in Unreal Engine 5. Um, and here I've set up a scene um, just of a little sort of uh, stream of, of some kind um, in a test scene um, and at the moment this is using a virtual height field mesh with virtual textures so uh, let's start by just dragging in a U surface mesh grid and at the moment it's showing us the, uh, the direction um, of each side as a preview mesh And I don't want it as big as this, so I'll just change the dimension scale. At the moment, each uh, grid size is, is uh, 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters, uh, and it's producing um, five on the left, right, top, and bottom. So if we uh, go to wireframe mode, then we can see that it produces a preview mesh. So if we disable the preview mesh and turn on create mesh, then that now uses the settings that we've got set up. And at the moment, we've got uh, five on the right, uh, so five, five squares there, um, each one being uh, one meter by one meter. Um, if we change the complexity to two, then as you can see, it subdivides each square. And so as we keep adding detail, then uh, the mesh gets more complex. Um, so if we turn off the icon, then we can also turn off the arrow. And if we go down to the height section, then we can say use height texture, specify the max height that we want to uh, to go to. So when, when the texture is pure white, it will be at 100 centimeters. And when it's at pure black, it'll be at min height of zero. So it'll just be where it is at the moment. So if we say, set 20 centimeters at, at its highest and then uh, go and find a uh, texture I already have one uh, preloaded from uh, Quixel this texture here is a uh, ARD texture so that's ambient occlusion roughness and then displacement on the blue channel so if we bring that into the where the height texture is and specify the height texture channel to use the blue channel then now um, we can see some displacement is happening. So if we uh, scale the texture down, sorry, scale the mesh down to maybe 0.6 and then increase the complexity, which at the moment is 80,000 polygons. So if we increase that up to 50, that now makes 500,000 polygons. Then we can also raise the height a little bit. And if we apply the material from uh, Quixel, then we can now see that the displacement on the mesh matches the material. At the moment, this is in uh, flat uh, material mode, flat texture mode. Um, so with things like um, height detail and height noise, you can specify the alignment um, to be flat or world aligned. Um, at the moment it's uh, flat, but at the moment it's not actually used. We're only using the height, the height texture, uh, which just uses the full UV range of the mesh. Um, so combined with the, the material that comes from Quixel, they should match. If you want to use uh, world aligned, then you can not use the height texture and instead you can use um, max height base. So you just enable that. And then we uh, can use the height detail and height noise sections, specify world aligned, specify their world aligned size. And then also you can then capture the height to use any surface normals as well. 
uh, but for now if we just stick to using the height texture within the normal 0 to 1 UV range uh, then as you can see they match um, and at the moment we can we can either just stamp that in place or um, the other thing we can do is at the moment towards the edge of the mesh is um, the displacement is um, is raised all the way around so if this is the right that's the top over there so if we want to go down to um, flatten we can also use flatten on the right that'll then flatten it back down to the the base value so that we get no displacement on the edge um, and the range the range is zero to one at the center so if we uh, continue and change uh, the flatten values then we can flatten it all the way around um, and at the moment I'll just decrease the complexity to make it a little bit faster so now that we have that we can uh, we can either take it down to the point where we would want it or we can also raise it above and then tell it to capture the surface and we can also add some uh, shift values so we can shift before removing any polygons down by six centimeters and then now we can just increase the complexity again and just recapture at the moment there's no polygons been removed um, and the reason it doesn't capture the displacement on the material here is because this is a virtual height field mesh and uh, this is just a GPU effect with off, uh, to provide the offset so uh, it, it doesn't actually exist um, the only thing it's capturing is the, is the flat surface of the landscape underneath um, so again there's, there's a myriad of uh, settings here that you can use to uh, manipulate the height um, affect the, uh, the displacement that you have uh, use world aligned uh, you can even use the spline to stretch it out um, or we can just go choose a folder where to stamp it to And just choose stamp mesh this now converts the procedural use surface mesh into a static mesh asset the reason the material went back to being gray is because I forgot to uh, add it in to uh, to the stamp mesh material so if we just drag that material back onto there this is now an actual static mesh so if we look at it within the world it uh, it also uh, enables nanite um, so if we change to nanite visualization then we can see that um, nanite has already been enabled for this mesh um, and you can enable or disable that um, use surface mesh doing that with inside um, edit project settings and then use surface mesh uh, under the stamp section there is a setting that says to enable nanite uh, when you stamp the use surface mesh within Unreal Engine 5 um, so we can also use use surface mesh edit to remove the polygons on this 
at the moment there's quite a high density of polygons anyway. Um, we could use the modeling plugin. So if we select the mesh and then choose modeling, we can also choose to, we can go down to remesh. And then we can choose to remesh to a certain value if we want to. And we can also choose simplify. That gets rid of unnecessary uh, unnecessary polygons where the mesh is predominantly flat uh, and only keeps them where it curves. So that reduces the number of polygons quite a lot. Um, and then, like I say, you can also use U Surface Mesh Edit which is a new new tool added in version 1.3. Um, it comes with this um, tool icon here. And this allows us to select any mesh. And we can um, use surface check to test, to fire up uh, line traces from each of the vertices. And if they hit the landscape, then uh, any that are underneath the landscape are removed. So what I've done now is uh, I've had to disable Nanite on the mesh because um, it was causing it not to remove the polygons correctly. Uh, so if we just temporarily disable Nanite by uh, going to uh, the actual static mesh asset, right click it and say Nanite disable, um, and then we can use the tool uh, just choose the mesh again, specify a min removal distance, and then just choose remove polygons. So now any any polygons that are fully underneath the landscape and are hidden have just been trimmed away. Um, so as you can see, this is where the polygons were before, and now we say we remove polygons. And it now clamp, clamps them in. So once we've um, done that, then we can just say choose save static mesh. This now saves it as a second static mesh, uh, so it doesn't replace the the original one. Um, and then you can also right click and say nanite enable again. And so now. We're back to using Nanite again. So because this um, this is actually um, baked into the mesh and not a GPU effect with offset, it means that um, if we go into into the mesh um, in U Surface Mesh, it's told to turn on. Um, use complex collision as simple. Um, so we go down to collision complexity. Uh, in the original mesh, use of this mesh will have um, applied collision complexity as use complex collision as simple. Uh, but with this edited mesh, then that is, uh, is set to project default. Um, so if we want to, we can we can choose uh, use complex collision as simple, which uses the the geometry uh, per polygon collision. Um, and if we go back into the world and then play. So as you can see here, we uh, we can move our feet through through the actual um, virtual height field mesh because there is no collision there. We're using the landscapes collision, which doesn't have that rock there. Um, whereas if we go over to this um, new static mesh and it's using complex collision as simple, as you can see, the feet actually ride up onto the per polygon displacement.
So I hope you enjoyed this um, video tutorial um, demonstration of what some of the features that U Surface Mesh has. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.